What is going on guys, this is Virus and today I will show you guys a great method on how to create skins for all kind of models in Call of Duty 4 and also I will teach you how the separate texture maps like normal map or specular map are working in Call of Duty 4. This method requires Photoshop CC with a DDS plugin, however I won't show you how to get Photoshop CC but if you are familiar with the usage of Google or YouTube you should be able to get it yourself. So like usual, at first download all the files which I've linked in the description. So now you should have these four files. So the first thing which we will do is installing the DDS plugin. So open up the DDS plugin.zip and go to your installation path of Photoshop CC, plugins, file formats and if the file formats folder isn't there, simply create it. Uh, go into file formats and paste the files in here. To test if it's working, simply create a new project in Photoshop CC and try to save it and see if you can save it as a DDS file and if you made everything correct. So next up you need a model which you want to texturize as an OBJ file and its related texture maps such as color map, specular map and if you want also the normal map. I've linked some common models in the description, however if you want to export them yourself because you want to make a skin for M4 or any other weapon or any view hands which I didn't link in the description, check out this tutorial where I explain how to export X models out of Call of Duty 4. So next up open Photoshop and go into the common model folder. I will edit a Desert Eagle skin for this tutorial. So I will go into the Weapon Desert Eagle Silver HR Promo folder and now drag the OBJ file into Photoshop. So as you can see the image is quite small so the first thing I will do is increase the size. So go to Image, Canvas Size and then change the size to something you want. I will just make it full HD. So to work in the 3D mode you need to have the 3D layer selected and you need to have the move tool selected. And in the bottom left you can see a few more tools. The left one is for rotating the camera. The middle one is for moving the position of the camera. And the left one is to zoom the camera in and out. Also you can find a little light symbol. If you click on it you can edit the light's position which is useful as the weapon gets sometimes a little bit of dark and that's not good if you want to edit the skin. So now we're gonna set the texture maps for the 3D model. So click on the model and then right click on the model and select the materials tab. Now click on the folder symbol next to diffuse color and select the color map. For me it already has loaded the color map, but in case it hasn't loaded up for you, I will quickly show you how to set the color map. Now click on the folder next to specular light and select your specular map. And now you can select the normal map texture as a bump map. That's actually not the correct way how to do it, but it works quite well, so I will simply do it. The next thing you should do is uh, left click somewhere in the screen to deselect the model, then right click somewhere in the screen. Go to the camera tab and press side from below, zoom in a little bit and afterwards adjust the light. So at first I will show you how to apply 2D layers to the 3D object. So we are just gonna create a random text where we want to have it on the weapon. Afterwards right click on the text layer and select rasterize text. And then right click on the text layer again and select merge with layers down below. So as you can see we have our 2D layer on our 3D weapon, however be sure that you always select the camera perspective to down or top or whatever, otherwise it will give you weird results. So you cannot do the whole skin in the 3D mode, so to work in the 2D mode simply click the diffuse map in the right bottom at the layer and the 2D map will show up. So as you can see there are some black lines indicating the mesh of the 3D model which is very useful so you know which spot of the weapon you are editing. So if you for example make the handle of the weapon green, just create a new layer, 
For that, click on Layer, New, Layer. Afterwards, select the Brush tool, click on the colors and select a green color. To change the size of your brush, hold Ctrl, Alt, right click and move the mouse sideways to change the size of the brush and move your mouse upwards or downwards to change the softness of the edge. So I just gonna quickly change the opacity to 100% and color the whole handle green. So when you're finished with your changes, just press Ctrl S to save and go back into your main project and you will see the changes. So I think you get an idea how this old system works. So I will quickly just add another image to the weapon. For that just drag the image into your project and adjust the size. Afterwards go into your color map and create a new layer. The layer you have selected in the color map always is a layer where you reduce the images to if you work in 3D. So go back into your 3D project, select the image layer, right click, rasterize image, right click, reduce image to layers below. So as you can see our handle is not green anymore. But as we created the textures on separate layers, we can simply go into our color map and drag the green handle layer on top of the galaxy image layer and it should be fine again. So if you inspect the 3D model again, you will see that there are a lot of spots left which are silver or kind of fucked up. So that's basically why you can't work only in the 3D mode. So I will go into the color map again and also drag the galaxy image into there and put it below our reduced layers. Also I will select the eraser tool and will remove some parts of the galaxy image where it's stretched quite a lot because we reduce it. So if you inspect the 3D model again it should look fine now. Now we're gonna take a closer look to the specular map. To open it just double click on the specular color layer of the 3D model. So to make the specular color map, it's always good to use the normal color map as a basement. So we're just gonna go into the color map window again. Here we will select all layers, press Ctrl J to duplicate them all and press Ctrl E to make one layer out of all of them. Now select the move tool, click and drag the image onto the specular project tab. And when you're in the specular project tab, hold shift and release left mouse button to place it in the original position. So to make a specular color map, it's always good to use a normal color map as a basement and increase its contrast, saturation and lightning a bit. Also for the color map and for the specular color map, it's not a bad idea to combine it with the original skin of the Desert Eagle. Also you could screen a metal texture on it, which will give it a nicer look. So for this tutorial I will simply duplicate the texture with Ctrl J and set its mode to add. Also I will adjust its opacity a little bit and it should be fine. So next up we are gonna do the specular intensity map, which is also made in the specular color map file. Quickly go to the channel tab. The RPG channel of this file will define in what color the weapon will reflect and the files alpha channel, which we will create now, defines how intense the weapon will reflect. CovTT4 combines specular intensity and specular color map in one file in this way. To create the alpha channel, simply hold Ctrl and click on the image of the RBG channel, go to selection, save selection, give it a name and press OK. Press Ctrl D to deselect your selection. Now click on the alpha channel which just has appeared. The darker the image is, the less it will reflect, and the brighter it is, the more it will reflect. So if you want your gun to reflect 100%, simply select the brush tool and the color white and paint the channel white. If you get this arrow, you need to select a layer in the layers tab and then go back to the channel tab and select the alpha channel and you should be able to paint it now. But I don't want my gun to reflect 100%, so I just go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast and turn it all the way up and it should be fine. Now simply press Ctrl S to save, go back into your 3D project and it should be updated there. Now we're gonna take a look on how to edit the normal map. However mostly this is not needed as the normal map should be fine for a nice looking skin. But there's a lack of information in the internet so I'll tell you how to edit the normal map correctly. 
To open it, simply double click on the bump map in the layer section in the main project. The normal map fakes deaths and hates on flat surfaces. If you go into the channel tab, you'll see that it also has an alpha channel. The alpha channel is basically the same in image as the RBG channel, the only difference is that the light comes from the bottom at the RBG channel and from the right in the alpha channel. At first we need to turn the alpha channel into a layer so we can work on it properly. To do so, select the alpha channel, press Ctrl A to select everything, then Ctrl C to copy it, and afterwards go to the layers tab, create a new layer, select it and press Ctrl V to paste it. We're gonna create some random screw heads like already used in this normal map. At first select the pipette, pressing I and click somewhere in the grey part of the image. Afterwards select the ellipse tool and click and drag a circle while holding shift, press Ctrl J to duplicate the layers, adjust the position of one layer, select both layers, right click on it, click rasterize layers and press Ctrl E to merge them into one layer. Afterwards double click on the layer. A window will pop up. Here you activate the check mark in front of bevel and empos. You can see it already looks similar than the other parts of the normal map. Click on bevel and empos to view its settings. I've took way too much time to set it up correctly, so simply copy and paste my settings into your Photoshop. Now press OK and duplicate the layer with pressing Ctrl J. We've put the light source at the bottom, so we're finished with our editing at the RBG channel. Simply select one of the screw head layers and the RBG layer and press Ctrl E to merge them into one layer. Now we need to put the light source to the right for the screw head on the alpha layer. To do so, double click on the screw head layer, change the angle from minus 90 to 0 and press OK. Now drag the layer on top of the alpha layer. Select both layers and press Ctrl E to merge them into one layer. Now we have our RBG and our alpha layer finished. Make sure that the alpha layer where the light comes from the right side is on top and visible. Then go to the channels tab and delete the old alpha channel. Hold Ctrl and click on the image of the RBG channel. And afterwards click on the small rectangle with a circle in it in the right bottom of the screen to make a channel out of your selection. At last, go back to your layers tab and disable the alpha layer. Now you have a correctly edited normal map with two more screw heads on the back of the weapon. So you can now save your normal map and go back to the main project. Now you should know how all the separate texture maps are working and how to edit them. I'll show you how to test your weapons in game. I quickly create a folder somewhere to save my textures in my main project. Save the textures separately as DDS files. Now you need to call the fights correctly, like the skins you want to replace in game. So in my case it's Desert Eagle. If you don't know the file names, go to the main directory of your Call of Duty 4 and open up the IV04IVD to find out the name of the color maps and normal maps of you hands and weapons. And if you want to know the name of the specular map of your weapon, check out the IV06IVD file in your main directory. You will find the original textures and names in there. Now drag the Tom's IVI and DDS EXE in the folder where your DDS textures are placed in. Select all the DDS textures and drag them onto the EXE. To test the skins, open up the askinning.zip which you downloaded in the beginning of this tutorial and go into your mod folder of your Call of Duty 4 client. Extract it into your mod folder. Afterwards, open the A skinning folder in your mod folder and open the 3xp cj ivd. Now drag all the ivi files of your textures in here. Now go into the cod jumper folder which is in the A skinning mod and open up the underline skins gsc with any text editor you have. Here you can set the models and weapons which you want to spawn with. Make sure the weapon or model is pre-cached in the init function and just replace the model name or weapon name with the model or weapon which you want to test out in the GIF items function. Save the file and afterwards start your Call of Duty. When you are in game, select the A skinning mod and when it's loaded, type map, MP shipment or any other map to start the game. 
Now you should have your skin in game and can see if it looks good or if you need to change some stuff. The model will always look different in Photoshop than in game because the specular color and intensity map are different in Photoshop and also the normal map which Call of Duty has is completely different than the usual normal maps. Also keep in mind that the skin's look differs from map to map as its reflections are depending on the map you use it on. Sadly I cannot find a way to make the normal maps for guns hold in my hand work for me. I tried with multiple mods, configs and weapons, however it might be useful anyways to know how the normal maps are working as it works well for view hands and other models. If you want to inspect the maps separately, you can disable the normal maps via R underline normal zero and the specular maps via R underline specular zero. If you stayed until now, thank you for watching this long ass video and feel free to ask questions in the comments and see you in the next video.